All right, so if you've made it up to this point, uh, we've submitted our, s our address, but now it's the part about verifying that that is our website. Notice, at this point, at that point, you could have filled in any address, as I did there. That could have been my competitor's address, but now I need to actually confirm that my site here is actually the site that I that I claim to own. This is where your login comes into play. So right now what I'm going to do is show you how you would do this if you have um, if you have a WordPress site. So the way we'll do this is I'll show you this. This might look familiar on your own site if you've got Joomla or Wix or whatever, but basically we're going to find where can I edit the code of my site. We're going to edit one line of code and not to scare you, but if you do change one character in your code, it could break your whole site. So let's say we're pasting this link, and then we accidentally delete that ankle bracket, it could break your whole site. So if you're not comfortable with this, you know, I'm going to show you how this is done, and then I can help people individually for a moment. Um, if you're not comfortable doing it, then don't do it. But I'm going to show you how, how I would do it. Uh, your login information then you want to use it now to log into your website I'm going to log into my WordPress website if you've got Drupal or something else log in and we can probably figure it out I'm going to go ahead and log into my site my WordPress site make sure you spell your name your address correctly So let me give you a moment to log in. Here's my WordPress site. If you've got a different version of WordPress, it'll look just about the same. If you've got Joomla, Wix, or whatever, like I said, I'll, I'll help you individually. But see if you can find a place where it says something like edit HTML or edit meta tags. That's another thing. Ex uh, edit HTML, edit meta tags. So if you're in WordPress, I teach a whole class on WordPress. There's a beginning version and then a more advanced version where we add shopping cart capabilities to a site. Those, uh, the basic one just started, and that more advanced one will be next month. But uh, WordPress is very powerful, like many modern website building tools, in that you have some sort of control panel to edit and all of that simple buttons to add pictures and, and text, but behind it all is code, oftentimes HTML code. In WordPress, if we want to edit our code, we would go here to the Appearance menu, and then we have Editor. This pulls back the curtain of WordPress and shows you all of the naked code, and we need to go to a specific place so we can edit it. So under Appearance Editor, this tells me I'm editing my current theme. My current theme is yogurt, WP yogurt. Yours may be something else. But it says style.css. Right now I'm currently editing my CSS file, and my website is made up of dozens of files, which are listed here on the right. I do want to test for Yes. I don't need the sidebar. If you don't have one like mine, like I said, I'll help you out in a moment. Media, right? So then here, if you go to the header, we have a header uh, file. And this is the very first thing at the top of the document. So under header, this is what Bing is telling me, option number two. You can add a meta tag containing the authentication code to the head section of your default web page. So if you've got Dreamweaver, it's telling you put this meta tag up at the top in the, in the head section. 
I've got WordPress, so very similar. It's telling me somewhere you're going to have HTML head, and I'm going to copy this line of gray code and paste it in some place like this, where I see head, paste that meta tag near title, as long as it's in a section of head slash head. So let me show you how that looks on mine. Uh, so I'm looking at my WordPress. I'm looking at header.php. I'm looking at doc type, etc., etc. Oh, head. I see head right there. And then head starts and it goes on, and there's something that says meta right there. And link, etc. Link, link, slash head. So as long as I put this code somewhere between head and slash head, I should be okay. Again, if you're not comfortable, I'll help you out in a moment. But I found my place. It's going to be before slash head, so I'll simply paste. <clears throat> I, I'm not going to alter the code that they gave me. This says meta name ms validate. This is this little validation tag. Yep, right here. And then when I paste it in, I need to remember to save, I'm sorry, update file. At the bottom it says update file, so I need to remember to update file. And then I need to go back to Bing once I've updated and select verify. Now, I'm going to get a big old error message because I'm not setting mine up for real. But yours, if you set yours up properly, you should get a nice green check mark. So this is the option that I recommend, number two, to add this one line of code to your website and verify, and you're done. If you're not able to do this, this is where I can give everyone a little bit of help. The other option is your number is the option number one where you upload a file. So um, I'm going to take a moment then. If you need some help, I'll help you out. I would not recommend number three, even though it says, "Yeah, choose GoDaddy," and then click whatever. This is going to be this is going to take much more complicated than I usually would care to do. So um, any hands? Anyone need a little help? Okay, so I'll just kind of go back that way and help everyone a little bit. Take a moment to see if you can get it done, and if it works, you want to go back to your screen that has your website, and then we'll take it from there. But at the moment, I want to make sure we can verify as many people as possible. The other way, you can just put the file in the root. Yes, exactly. So if you're able to put the file in the root, you can do that too. What you're going to do is, does it have to be in search to get your website? Does it have to be in there, or could it be in another search engine? Do you have to be doing this all within the same search engine? Yes, because we're using Bing. Right. So you would have to go into your site group to be able to do this scenario. Um, no, it's two different things. You're going to go into Bing to do something on Bing, but you're not going to go through your website to Bing. You just go to your website as normal, and you go into Bing as normal. So you could go on any search engine to use website. You probably need a web browser. Web browser, yeah. Yes, you can use any web browser. Yeah. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I just wanted to know if you have that So I can upload it to the root. Exactly. I think it's easy access to the money. Yeah, try that exactly. If you've got FTP access, just bring my password. I've got all the power. No, next time. All right, all right. So once I copy in the my file that I'm going to copy and add the line in my email slides. Um, I just have to refresh the page. I mean, I just think Yeah, I just have to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Did this, did this, okay, it seems that you've got GoDaddy, you've got the version of a site for you, there's different levels, and I think you've got the basic level, which is limited to many things you can do. Okay, so I'm not sure if you'll be able to do this. Okay, I'm going Site settings. And then uh, you got a tab at the top, this is general settings. And you can see how it says site file and a code to put between the head tags. That's exactly what Bing is asking us. So that's where you're going to put your Bing code. Oh, so I just have to copy it and paste it? I think so. You can right click it. Oh, see, yeah, I like sham person, so I And then back to, uh, and then on that end here, right click it. Then when you make any changes, it seems like you then have to publish so that the whole world can see those new changes. Just close that. So now, uh, just count to 10. I will go back to the verify screen and at the bottom put the verify button. So you've got this to go daddy too. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just put together a little No, I work in advertising for a long time. Oh, okay. So I know about the marketing part. So what should it should look like and what information should be said I think that this is kind of new animal. So I'm just trying to yeah, it definitely will. So we'll put it, we'll put it in the 
All right, does anyone need any more help? I think we're almost So you need to go to the fields and then editor. Okay, so then here in the editor, you're going to go to the header. The header. <laughs> okay, so you already copied the code from Bing? No, I haven't. Okay, let's go back to Bing and copy that code. Well, uh, it was back here on this very high. This line right here of code, copy it. I don't have to. Yes. No. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then go back to a higher percent. And then we have a section here. Uh, so after the word head, we're going to center. Now go back to Bing again. Yes. So now go back to Bing. There's a guy. And then scroll down, and at the bottom you have Yeah. Okay, so you have the red X. This is the but it looks like you got a Chinese cultural web guy. You know, you got Chinese. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, here. Now, how about this one? Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for 
windows, and then you will put your mouse over it and put your mouse on the appearance. All right, everyone, let's go on. Then it looks like everyone might have done it as best as possible. So let's go on, please. Uh, obviously, this, um, you know, it took us a little while. Some people, it worked right away, and some of you, it didn't, and some of you, it was uh, complicated, some of you, it was easy. Uh, for WordPress, that's why I focus on, well, if you have WordPress, this is the easiest way that we can do it. If you've got other platforms, there's other ways to do it. And I learned a thing or two about, oh, you do it like this on that platform. Hopefully I remember it next time. But um, this, is the, this is the step that you're going to set up. And since, you've, since most of you that I've seen that you've set it up for the first time, you're not going to have any data here yet. That's normal. That's why when we come back next week, uh, we might have some data. If you did get data, again, wait for next week where I talk in detail about everything that is, uh, that, that is in these screens. But the second thing that I want to talk about is uh, um, sitemaps. And then what we learned right now about setting up the Bing Webmaster Tools and the sitemaps, we're going to do the exact same thing on Google in a moment. But sitemaps is another thing where perhaps we're going to have a lot of divergence on how to do this exactly. But if, um, let's say I've got my site, your site, you, you want to click on it, uh, depending on what screen you're on, uh, if, you, if you click on your site, you're going to look at it like this, and then the previous screen is the My Sites. So I deal with more than one site, that's why I have that screen that's got a bunch of sites. But you've only got one screen most likely, so you have your dashboard here. Under My Sites, uh, this is an overview. This is where we were looking at percentages a moment ago, but this is where it'll tell us the exact values. I've increased 25% more clicks, so then that actually means two more clicks. right? So the percentage and the actual values will be listed here. And again, once we get data, I'll explain every screen in more detail. But I want to deal with um, this screen or this option here that says Site Maps. Uh, I don't have any site map. I'm going to say I don't have a site map like you. And we have a button that says Submit a Site Map. So we want to click that. And it says, OK, add the address to your site map. Well, this is one of these things that I'm saying that is not automatically easy to set up as a person. I'll talk about a plugin. <clears throat> so once again in WordPress, and then we'll see how people are individually, but in WordPress, out of the box it has a lot of capabilities. And anything that's lacking, we can add to it with a plugin. So a plugin is like a mini program that adds more capabilities to WordPress. Then I need a plugin to make a sitemap, because a sitemap is something complicated. So if you've got WordPress, you can go to your, on your menu here on the left, you've got plugins. And I want to select add a new plugin. Add new. And people, people all over the world create plugins. There's a plugin to add chat capabilities to your site. So if someone needs to talk to you right now for customer support, there's a plugin for that. If you need um, slideshows and such, there's plugins for that. If you need e-commerce capabilities, there's plugins for that. The one that we need at the moment, the one that I recommend for WordPress, is one called Yoast. Y-O-A-S-T. Yoast is a, 
a suite of, of little features perfect for SEO. Uh, I'll talk about it again in detail on the next classes. One feature that Yoast has is to create sitemaps. This will go through every page of your site and every post and every picture and organize everything into the proper files and then give you one link and that's the link that we plug into Bing. But here in WordPress, I'm going to first search for the Yoast plugin. And I should get a result that says WordPress SEO by Yoast. Um, and to confirm it's the right one, it should say it's from, it's every plugin has an author. This one says it's by Team Yoast. This is the right plugin, WordPress SEO by Yoast. While you're here, actually, there are two plugins that I like to work with. One of them is the WordPress SEO by Yoast, and the other one is Google Analytics by Yoast. Both of these do slightly different things, and I think one day they're going to merge them into one. The Yoast, the Google Analytics is the older plugin. It's already up to version 5. This one's on version 1.6. I bet when they go to version 2.0, they'll merge them together. But at the moment, they're two separate plugins. Um, we haven't talked about the Google Analytics yet. We'll get to that. But this plugin, WordPress by Yoast, I'm going to select Install Now. And, oh, and then I'm going to confirm. And then what happens is it's going to connect to where all the plugins are saved. It's going to download it, install it. And you have to remember to activate the plugin. You can install many plugins. They don't all have to be running at the same time. So you have to remember to activate it. And now this took me over back to my this took me back to my plugin screen installed plugins. And I've got the brand new WordPress SEO plugin. So WordPress SEO by Yoast. Uh, click settings. And then um, what this did is it made a brand new section in my WordPress. I've got a whole new section called SEO. So there's all of these features that I'll be talking about <coughs> what this plugin can do. But the one we care about at the moment is, S is XML sitemaps right there. So click on XML sitemaps. Yes? Um, it says um, allow tracking or do not allow tracking. It's, a, it's like a pop-up reader that pops up. OK, if that pops up, that's just, that's just Yoast asking to uh, keep track of who installs the plugin just for their, just to see how popular the plugin is. So you can cancel that. You can say, no, I don't, track, don't track the plugin. Yes? It's WordPress specific. It's a plugin that was designed to work with WordPress. Yes. So you can add this if your site isn't up yet in the just the yeah. directory. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there like a third party plugin that's not um, site builder specific that you could use to you know, boost your uh, Google Analytics? Well, um, yes, everything that these plugins do are sort of like a pretty interface to do something that you can do manually. And to do it manually, it's all in that link, the first link that I gave about the Webmaster Tools manual. So if you read there, they'll tell you exactly what you need to do, but these will just do it for you. Yes? And if you're already running all-in-one SEO, mm -hmm. stick with that. Okay. Stick with that. All-in-one SEO should make a sitemap for you, and then you'll we'll use the sitemap it generates in a moment. Uh, okay, so XML sitemaps.
there's more than one plugin, more than one way to use a site to create a sitemap. And I like this one. Uh, so here, on this screen, then it's saying uh, check this box to enable XML. If it's not turned on, you want to turn it on. Um, so right here under the XML sitemaps. So I'm going to turn that on. And there's a bunch of options. All the defaults usually work pretty well. Um, again, the, um, the map at the mall has a listing of everything. Yeah. But that might be too much for you here, so it's up to you. But the defaults will work fine, for example. Disable all users with zero posts. So this is going to take keep track of every user of your every every administrator of your site, every picture, every post, everything. If you have multiple users, like let's say the boss has a login, but he never changes anything. He has no posts. So it's got disable all user users with zero posts. Okay, that makes sense. Well, I don't want any of the subscribers to be added to my uh, to my sitemap, so I can turn that on or off. Question? How do I get the history? I SEO. Okay, look up here. Look up here. Look up, look up here. You want to go to XML sitemaps? Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Alright, so then you can disable who you don't want in the sitemap. There's other settings. I would say it's not necessary for the subscribers because if someone is subscribing to your site, they're not really part of your site. They're just, you know, subscribed to it. They're paying attention to it, so they don't need to be added to this. If, if my, mine doesn't show that drop-down window at all, it didn't give me the option of exclude users without posts. Um, it didn't give me any of that. So Did you turn on this check mark? Yes. Okay, I'll have to look at yours in a moment. Um, it may not show up until after you save one time. There's save changes at the bottom. Try to save and see okay. if it shows it up. Yeah, you want to check it. Uh, so then here we've got general settings. Ping Yahoo, ping ask. This is saying, this is going to create a map of everything on your site. And then when you add something new, the plugin will update itself and tell Google and Bing about it. This is another good thing about using a plugin. If I was doing this manually, I would need to go in and update the code myself. So it says here, this will automatically tell Google and Bing about the changes. If you also want to tell Yahoo and Ask.com, you can turn that on. That's a good idea. Tell the other search engines too. Depending on the complexity of your site, you may have post pages media or more. And this, again, is what don't you want to be part of the sitemap? Usually you want everything. You want Google, you want Bing to know about your posts and your pages and your media. You could, but I don't recommend it. If you turn these things off, this is exclude, remember. Okay. This will say, don't pay attention to my posts or pages or media. Okay. Not good. And here we've got exclude taxonomies. The default is fine. Basically, um, your the way you organize things. Do you use tags? Do you use categories? Do you use formats? There's other things too. Products. Question. Yeah. So I'm using the all one SEO, and I did not see the XML uh, sitemap for the margin. So I dug in a little deeper. It looks like my XML sitemaps are not activated. So yeah, go ahead and activate. And the other, other things, really, this is another example where 
If you need a little help, I can definitely come and help you out, but the defaults often work really well. And then at the bottom, I'll select Save Changes. So remember to save changes. What is the checking on the user assignment? Check it or not? Disable author, user assignment. You want to check it on. And check. Check it on. Check on. Okay. Save changes. So now at the top, it should tell me here you can find your XML sitemap here. So that's the link that Bing is asking for. Uh, so I should be able to right-click and copy link address, whatever your web browser says. Maybe it says copy location or something, but that's the link that Bing is asking for. So when you go back to the top here, you should say it, it should say you can find your XML sitemap here. So right-click that, copy link. Yeah, right click. If you if you do a regular click, it might show you something weird. So when I copied that link, uh, I would go back to. I would go back to Bing and paste that address, submit it, and then this will take a little while. The verification might have happened right away, but when you do the site b submit sitemap, that might take a little while. Mine says pending because it's going to connect to the file. It's going to follow every link listed there. It's going to scan every page and picture and everything, and then that's the crawl. That's that uh, column that says crawl crawl rate or whatever it says. It's going to be checking every page of your site. And if it finds a page that it did not know about, it'll add it to the index. That's the column for the index, crawl index. So this might happen right away that it then says complete, or it might take a few hours or even days, depending how complex your site is. Question? Yeah, um, so when I clicked on the XML sitemap um, link, and, and I copy link address, nothing happens. I don't have a sitemap yet. Is that why? Maybe, know. maybe too. Yeah, maybe the plugin hasn't fully created it yet either. Okay. okay. Yeah, so either the plugin hasn't created it yet, or there's some other issue, but we'll 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 address it. Okay. Uh, so at this point here, I've submitted it and that's all I can do. I have to wait until a certain point when it fully analyzes it. Maybe when I get home, I log into Bing Webmaster Tools again and then it'll say sitemap accepted or whatever it says and it has analyzed your whole site and that's the two things we need to do with Bing. We need to verify our site with that little bit of code and we need to add a sitemap. We need to do that exact same thing with Google. But I'll address that in a moment. Any general questions right now? Yeah? What if you decide you wanted to use the all-in-one plugin instead of this one? Then do you have to delete this plugin or does it I think they conflict, so I would use one or the other. If you've already got the all-in-one plugin working, keep using it. Uh, you can actually migrate the data from that one into this one. I don't recommend that trouble. Just stick with the one that's already worked, but make sure you've got your sitemap turned on, and then use it uh, in in the in the webmaster tools. But if you, like, for example, I don't have a, I don't I don't have a sitemap on my site yet. So if I decided, and this wasn't activated, so if I decided, well, I want to use the other plugin instead of this one, then how would I do that? That's more of an advanced question, and um, it's unique to you, but it's, um, okay. again, uh, maybe because you just turned on your sitemap, you just have to wait for it to fully activate. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, check again a little later, or send me an email, and then we'll take it from there. But okay. at your point, you're, you've got a unique case, perhaps. Yes. Victor, I'm getting a message I've had a few people are getting where when you when you click on XML sitemap instead of just getting one sitemap, I'm getting six. No, that's normal. Now mine's not gonna mine's not gonna show up because mine's a testing site. But yeah, that's normal. Uh, if you actually click on it, 
let me show you here. Mine might it might look a little something like that. Mine's only showing two, but yours might show six. So you okay. see something like this? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so if you guys see something like that, that's fine. Go ahead and still use that address that it's telling you because again, this is the complexity of a sitemap. A sitemap with a plugin will analyze every aspect of your site and make appropriate sitemaps. And I would not want to do this myself. I want a plugin. What's that? Are you are you gonna post or paste in each one of your segments? Nope. Again, you're gonna copy Just that the address at the top and then and then Google and Bing will deal with what's inside of it. Okay. Okay. Yes. I'll help you one moment. So this is what any good uh, SEO company would do if you do this and it's maybe a little complicated or you're just paying attention and you're seeing uh, I want to run my business I don't want to do SEO if you're gonna hire someone they should be able to do some of this basic stuff uh, and the whole point of this is to be able to track the data is it working am I paying these people some money and am I getting more hits Maybe you're seeing statistics on your GoDaddy C panel, but this will give you a much bigger picture. This will tell you how long someone was on your site, what page was the most popular, um, where did the traffic come from, what search engine term was used. But we won't really get any of this data until we've got it set up. So your homework is going to be, we did this for Google, uh, we did this for Bing, and now you're going to need to do this for Google. So the handout, I'm going to turn on the printer again in a moment, the links are right here. Web, Google Webmaster and Google Analytics. For your homework, you're going to try to do this for Google. Um, you can email me and I'll try to help you as best as possible. And when we come back next time, of course I can help you again. I'm going to wrap up the lecture in a moment, but this is the sort of nuts and bolts that we have to get out of the way to fully be able to do good SEO because our our efforts may be for naught if we don't even know is it working. So once we've got this set up, we'll know if it's working. So uh, any general questions? Yes? Well, actually, I can ask you afterwards. It doesn't relate to this. Okay. Any other general questions? Yes? So all these defaults on the on the um, sitemap, yeah, on the XML thing, that doesn't really. If your website isn't active right this moment, it's not changing anything significant. It's not changing anything on your site. What it's doing is it's analyzing what's in your site and making a little file that keeps track of it, but it's not affecting anything in your site. So you only activate it like when you go and when you put it into Bing. Yes. And you do that then it's actually doing something when you put it into Bing. Yes? I have a question. Let's say, like, six months down the road after you have this set up, and let's say you have somebody in your office assigned to go in and look at this all the time, and they lose their email. Mm -hmm. uh, for whatever reason, they move on. Is there a way to move? They use, let's say they use their personal email or Gmail, and you want to move all the statistics from from your account to your account that you have, is that possible? There is. Um, let me check right here. That's a very good question. So we can we can set more than one manager to these things. So if the other person is the manager, we would want to add you as the manager. And once you're the manager, you can remove them. I just need to find where it's at in here. I, I know it has it. Um, users, let's check here. Yeah, it's right. It's right here. Well, let me answer that question in a moment. Here's the place where you could add more people to manage your data. So under the configure my site, you could go down here to users and add more people that they can log in to to see this data to work with this. And notice there's the option about what kind of role. Can they read it and modify it? Read only administrator. Let's say you want someone to only see the data but not be able to make any changes. That's good. I don't want them to break anything. Read and modify gives them a little bit more 
uh, control, but then administrators at the highest level where they can add or remove users and other more complicated stuff. You have to decide. Now, if you're gonna if you're gonna take control of that, you probably want to become an administrator. Um, so once you've got more people here, then you can remove, you know, select the person, <coughs> remove them, and they no longer have access. Now the other question about what if they've already left? Um, hire a detective. You need a way to get in contact with them somehow and and, you're and get and get the login and as soon as you get the login, transfer to you the stuff to yourself and then move on. But there really isn't much recourse. And that happens sometimes for people to come in this class and the person moved away and they had it all under their, their, their name. And not that they did it on purpose to spite you, it's just that that's the normal thing most people would do. That's why we went in here and created a brand new Hotmail account, most of us did, so that we can have access to this. And I'm showing you here, under users, you can add more people. So you suggest more than one two people in their account in case they Yeah. Good protection. You can also op do option one, put the put the file in the root of the drive, sure, of the, of the directory. Any other general questions? All right then, so make sure that 